Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Capital City Matters. I'm John Landwehr. I used to be mayor of Jefferson City, and on this program we used to cover a lot of very localized events, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, nowadays we've been trying to expand a little bit and uh, kind of celebrate Jefferson City as the capital city of the state of Missouri, and, and we have a vast resource of uh, folks and agencies in Jefferson City that are very interesting, and sometimes we don't know a lot about them, and so our mission, if you will, is to uh, uncover some of those gems. Uh, my guest today, I'm uh, very proud to have with me another John, uh, John Dugan. Uh, John Dugan is our state archivist. John, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Glad uh, to be here. I, I'll bet that a lot of folks don't really know what a state archivist is, but we have one. And tell us a little bit about what, what you're supposed to do. Well, the state archives uh, that I'm fortunate to be the state archivist in actually is responsible for all of the records of state and local government across the state. So we actually have three divisions the, in the Record Services Division. Uh, one of those is Records Management that deals with modern records of state government. Uh, one of those divisions uh, is the Local Records Program, which helps do record management and archival work in the counties and cities across the state. And then the third division that most people probably associate with the archives is the Missouri State Archives which helps preserve and provide public access to the records of Missouri. Now, your office is tucked uh, in as an agency of the Missouri Secretary of State, right? That is, that is correct. We're right. in the Secretary of State's office at, uh, 600, uh, at 600 Bank. It makes a lot of sense. The Secretary of State, after all, you know, back, back in the old days, maybe before they even had a state archivist, the Secretary of State was really the secretary who kept all the books and records, and, and really still does, uh, of course, with corporations and elections and, and the Uniform Commercial Code and all those, all those things. But uh, historically, it seems like it's very appropriate to carve out a division within the Secretary of State and devote it to nothing but your important work. A absolutely. Uh, even the original state constitution, the Secretary of State was the official record keeper for the state of Missouri. And with the history of the archives, uh, we were established in the 60s. And, and with that establishment, we have been charged, uh, especially with keeping the records for state agencies in the state archives that have permanent and historical importance. A lot of those records are in our sister agencies in the Secretary of State's office, but there are a number of records, both legislative, executive, and judicial, that we keep uh, permanently for the other branches of state government too. Probably most of the, many of the guests that you've had on this program store their records with us and have their historical records with the archives. And again, your, your office is located in the, uh, in the Secretary of State's building, what, just west of the Capitol? Just building. west of the Capitol. It's, uh, I'm, I'm old enough to remember uh, when that building wasn't there and, and uh, the Secretary of State would have to kind of um, uh, uh, rent warehouse space throughout Jefferson City and move records around and sometimes they'd lose some or they'd get wet or something. And so when they built that building, and I, I forget how old it is, it's probably 20 years old by now. Right, it is. Uh, it's a beautiful building. Um, I, I get over there on corporate business quite a bit, but uh, it's such a welcoming building, architecturally very well laid out. Does, does your office, uh, do, you, do, you, do you like to have visitors come? Can somebody just come and knock on your door and look around or, or be shown around? Absolutely. Um, we're there to preserve the records, but we're also there for access to the records as well. Um, our walk-in traffic are kind of a diverse group. We have a lot of, of corporate customers, uh, state government employees, uh, but we also have a lot of people that are doing historical re research of various kinds. Academic researchers, uh, students that are working on History Day program projects and those kinds of things. And then our primary clientele, both in-house and on our website, is genealogist. It's still one of the most popular uh, hobbies that is out there, and a lot of people use our resources to do family history research, local history research, even like history of their home if they live here in Jefferson City. Those are some of the common things that we see people uh, using our facility for. Now you did something kind of daring. You pulled a little genealogical research on my family here, here in Cole County. I, I did. Uh, actually, our, we have a great group of volunteers that work with our organization. And most recently, they work with a, a number of groups nationally uh, to index the 1940 census that was released in April. Uh, and our volunteers indexed about 1.7 million entries of those um, to make it easier to find them online. Uh, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have dared to do this uh, if it had not been for the indexing work that they've done. 
but I, uh, we just went online um, and searched for landwares in this county, and we came up with two families, and until we sat down today, I didn't know which was yours. Uh, all of them were in the dairy business, and talking to you, that's what they, that's what they did. Uh, but we were able to find, I think you said, is it your father on the census? Uh, so, right. and his family. So, right. uh, hopefully the audience can see that uh, and, and see uh, where that he lives. I'll have to look down here. And, but he's living in a household with, you said, your uncles, I believe. Harry and, uh, and Ben and Fred. Is Frank your dad then? Frank's my dad. And, uh, and, and then two aunts, Minnie and Josephine. Right. Well, and so, what I found interesting when you showed me the two families, you said, <clears throat> you said well, I found two Landware families. And... I didn't know that there were any other landwares in Jefferson right. City, but I forgot that the census in 1940 would have made an important distinction between uh, residents of Jefferson City right. and residents outside Jefferson City. And of course, of course, I, my family grew up on the farm outside of the city, so it looks like there's two families, but they're all they're all they're all the same they're all the same family. But I just found it very interesting. Yeah, on the on the on the second page is another family, Lewis. But you said that that's that's my uncle. That's and, your uncle. And okay. Lewis had moved to town and then had uh, started the production end of the of Landwehr Dairy on okay. Ash Street, where Prison Brews is located now. Oh wow, so, so that's yeah. pretty neat. So, but I just thought Landwehr is a unique enough name. We should be able to find that and use that to illustrate the kind of things that you can find. Uh, on our website or in the ORCAT. So. Very interesting. Genealogic, the, the genealogical research is, of course, and I, I think a lot of it is aided by the Internet. I mean, it used to, it used to be that uh, uh, genealogical research was pouring through various county records in some rural state somewhere to find birth and death records, but the Internet sure speeds that up. It, it absolutely does. We have a website called Missouri Digital Heritage, and it was something that Secretary Carnahan created to try and help make those records better available uh, to the public. It was funded by the state legislature. It's a great cooperative effort. Uh, but, but that website gets between 8 and 13 million hits a month for people looking at death certificates and other local history records on uh, that website. Um, and it's just a tremendous resource to do to, to have access. But you can't just stop there because there's so much that's not online as well. So you still want to do the local courthouse research. You still want to come to the archives and do the research there as well. Now we've been talking about records, fiscal <laughs> records, digital records. Step way back with me and give me the big picture about how, how many how many records or documents do you think you have jurisdiction over? Our estimate, our really, really, and this is just an estimate because we constantly get records coming into the archives, but the last time we made an estimate was about 338 million records in our holdings, uh, individual documents that we might have. Um, and then in addition to that, we have uh, over a half million photographs in our collection. Um, so it's just a vast, vast collection. We have film and video and, and all kinds of other records as well, a, a wonderful map collection. Um, so it's very diverse. Yeah, I know when I was mayor, they uncovered somewhere in the basement of City Hall some original Sanborn maps. Right. And they were in some disrepair, but they very gently took them over to the archivists. And uh, I went over later and saw the technique of the, really it's a laboratory to, uh, to get, those, uh, get those maps and old documents. Our, our facility has a conservation lab, and I'm sure that that's what you're that's referring right. to, a word that they can humidify documents and flatten them. The old SAMR maps, because they use glue to adhere pasteovers on those uh, fire insurance maps, um, a lot of times they were wrinkled and they may have been dirty, and they can gently clean uh, that material. Uh, we have the only paper conservation lab in the state, so we get a lot of records from cities and counties and even our own state right. agencies. Uh, that if they're of enough interest, like the Sanborn maps would be, we have them come in, our professional conservators uh, try and preserve and conserve those records as best that they can, and then give them back to the state agency for use as well. In fact, if any viewers in Jefferson City want to come down at City Hall, the, San, the two, I think there are two Sanborn maps that were taken over to the state archives and, and worked on, and they're, they're right in the City Hall chambers, and they're, they're very large, you can't, you can't miss them, but oh, wow. they're, they're quite, quite uh, um, startling almost uh, uh, the, the way they've been preserved. Yeah, they're a great resource too because it shows even before aerial photography it shows the, the land use at the time. So if you go back to the earliest set of the Sanborn maps it has the original state capital there and then after the fire 
you know, you can see that it's gone, and then the new state capital is there on the next set of Sandler maps. So it's, it's a really great resource, and you can do that with, with commercial properties and with, uh, and, and with residential properties as well, and use those with the city directories uh, to kind of look at the, at the land use patterns uh, over time, whether it's your family's property or some other research. Um, how many, how many of your, uh, within your pictorial collection, how many, how many pictures do you have online? If you don't. We have, we have tens of thousands mm -hmm. online, but tens of thousands when you have a half a million is, is, is a really small percentage of what we, of what we have in the total collection. I know I was, I was over at your, uh, at, at the offices and, and just on some other business and I was, had to kill a little time and in, in the hallways, of course, they're very nice portrait pictures and I took my cell phone because I wanted to. I wanted to do a blog post on this particular scene in Jefferson City, and so I took a picture, and one, one of your employees came up and said, you know, that's online, you can get it online. So I felt like I, was, I felt a little, <laughs> like I wasn't really taking, making use of the technology yet available. Here I am with a camera taking a picture of a picture. You might get a little <laughs> higher resolution image off of our website. Right. That, that exhibit is called Missouri Memories. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's kind of, um, a sampling of the photographs that we have on our website, uh, and it has photographs from all over the state, but one of the series that's actually in the downstairs hallway is a lot of photographs of Jefferson City right. uh, and the area that have, that have various scenes from the area that are really right. interesting. Uh, John, nice having you here. We're gonna have another segment here in a few minutes, but we're gonna, we're gonna take just a, a quick break and we'll come back and talk about a few other things going on at the office of uh, the state archivist. When you open a book, a whole new world comes to life. And you just never know who we are going to meet. Ah, humbug. Read a book. And experience the wonder. Discover the fun. And become part of something magical. What's happening? To read A Christmas Carol and other books online, go to read.gov. Explore new worlds. Read. More than half of America's most important military decisions are made here. No, it's not the Pentagon. Or NORAD. Or the headquarters of Air Combat Command. It's the place that employs over 50% of our armed forces. It's where you work. See you in a couple weeks. So when your employees in the National Guard and Reserve need time off to serve, give them the freedom to protect ours. Hello again, welcome back to the second part of a, another interesting segment of Capital City Matters. My guest today is John Dugan. John is the state archivist, and uh, we covered a lot of ground in the first part of the, of, of the session. There were a couple of other things I wanted to cover with you, John. Uh, you know, you, you don't do this on your own. I do not. How many employees does the state archivist have? Well, we, the state archives, uh, the Record Services Division, have about 60 employees total, and it's pretty evenly div divided between our local records preservation program, which have field staff throughout the state working in those local offices. The Records Management Division uh, is our largest division, but only by a couple people. And then we have almost 20 that work in our Missouri State Archives as well. Uh, how many different offices do you have outside of Jefferson City? Um, satellite. Well, if you if you don't count the field offices, because most of those staff members are in a city hall one day and maybe a different county courthouse another, it's only the Jefferson City location, and then we have an office in the Globe Building in St. Louis, okay. uh, because St. Louis records are are so voluminous that, that that we are better able to serve those through a partnership that we have with the uh, circuit clerk's office there in St. Louis. Now, kind of like JCTV, you live and die with uh, volunteers also. Tell me, tell me about what type of volunteer opportunities and involvement you have. We have, we have a, a, a great group of volunteers and interns. We, we've even worked a lot with uh, Lincoln University and other universities with interns over the years for credit or for experience. But our, our core group of volunteers is a group of on-site volunteers that help process and scan our records 
and we literally have dozens of local Jefferson City and regional uh, uh, volunteers that come in and help us do work on site. And then we actually have several hundred e-volunteers that do indexing of our records over the internet. Uh, and we either send them packets of information and they do data entry work for us, or each spring uh, we post a lot of the records online and they do the indexing actually online as well. So they can do that from their homes? They can do that from their homes. Uh, and we normally have two to three hundred people participate really? uh, in our e-volunteer projects every year. Tell me, just again, uh, because when I go in your building, it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful building, so many different things going on there. Is, is there any actual relationship between the Wolfner Library and your office, or, or are they kind of different things? Um, occasionally, we've partnered with them. They have a great volunteer group as well. Uh, and next to ours, I think they have the largest number of volunteers in our building. Uh, but sometimes, like with, when we create our exhibits and those kind of things, we try and make them handicap accessible, and Wolfner works a lot with us to try and do uh, those kinds of things as well. During the Lewis and Clark um, uh, festivities, um, they actually created a, a tactile map of the state that was really, really interesting and, and useful for their audience as well. Um, on other things, I think it's a separate program. It's a really great program as well, uh, where th they provide uh, uh, audio books and those kind of things uh, for the hearing impaired. Uh, as well, and it's a great service. Now you mentioned exhibits, and and um, you've got you, you've had some wonderful ones going through the years. You have one now that's very interesting too. We just opened uh, what, what we think is our latest greatest exhibit. Uh, it's an exhibit that commemorates the 75th anniversary of the conservation department, uh, and uh, it kind of looks at the early history of the department. Um, and it even has a, if you come in and, 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 and look at the exhibit in, in our building, it has a touch screen uh, a video uh, computer there where you can watch some of the old films uh, that were created uh, by uh, the conservation department. Uh, we've never done that before in an exhibit, but uh, like you said, in the past we've done them for the Civil War Sesquicentennial and a number of other things in the past. And those continue to tour the state after they're in Jefferson City. Now those exhibits for the viewing audience, because I think this is kind of a, kind of a, a, a hidden treasure in Jefferson City for the viewing audience. Um, the Secretary of State's office is there west of the Capitol. And you just, th those exhibits, when, when they're in place, and there is one now on conservation, but you just walk in the front door and it's, it's right there. It's right behind our reception right. desk, uh, just, just, just directly behind the front doors. And they're welcome to come in any hours that our building is open and view uh, those. And even if we don't have our newest exhibit there because it's traveling in the state, we have our hallway exhibits that we mentioned earlier uh, that they can come in and enjoy as well. I would, I would invite folks at home, if, you know, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you just have a few minutes to spare, even just walking around, there are there three floors to the building? That's or right. Four, three? Yeah. And even if you just kind of walk around the hallways, those pictures, uh, a lot of them are early Jefferson City, but they're all early Missouri. Uh, I, found, I found the old uh, pictures from the, when the Lake of the Ozarks was new. Right. With the old bathing suits and the <laughs> old boats uh, and, and the folks on those kind of primitive cabins uh, down there. Um, there's one entire corridor that, that just has maybe eight or ten of those very nice pictures. So I would invite the viewing audience to not only don't stop on the first floor with the exhibit area, but take a walk around those other floors because the pictures are really cool and many of them uh, are, are available online if you're intrigued enough to maybe want a reproduction or something. A a absolutely, I think you can download them or if you need higher resolution images come in and we can normally scan them at a higher resolution uh, so that you can use those. But it's just a glimmer of it. If you're doing right. a re serious research right. project right. on Jefferson City history, you mm -hmm. may want to come in and do research because there's a lot more in person that you can find than we have online often. There's a famous uh, Jefferson City family, the Massey family, and Mr. Massey was a, I guess the title was state photographer. He was the state photographer. And many, many uh, Missouri, uh, just uh, stereotypical pictures of Missouri. You know, for example, the mules, the two mules reaching over the fence. Right. That's a typical, was it George Massey? I think. I, I think it's Gerald Massey. Gerald, Gerald Massey. Massey. Gerald Massey and his family lived right, right up, um, right up on the bluffs by the river, and 
Dan Massey, his uh, son, is still around town. Oh. I, I don't know that he took a bad photograph. It's a spectacular, I mean, it's a significant collection that we have. It's called the CID collection. That was the, right. the division of state government that's not even around anymore right. um, that he worked for. And, and we have tens of thousands of photographs that Massey took. And that's, a, I mean, there's only like five or six of his photographs in the exhibit you're talking right. about. Right. So. Um, also black and white. We, you know, m modern folks have kind of come to identify good photography with these spectacular color shots. And I, th I think Massey's were all black and white. If I'm they they were all, all black and white. Uh, we have a, a, we have a, a fairly good uh, color slide collection from tourism as well. Uh, that, uh, but they just don't, they don't compare. He had a great eye for the light and, and how to set up a, a, a photograph. And it, it just wonderful, wonderful photographs. Your building, when you walk in, you have the exhibit space. Um, you don't always have exhibits going on, now you do, but there's another kind of a hidden treasure if you take a left. Uh, one, one thing that Jefferson City doesn't have a lot of is um, uh, public places for presentations, uh, theater seating. Uh, that, that I, I call it the theater, but it's the auditorium, I guess? We, we call it the interpretive center. Interpretive center. We uh, very nice, um, very nicely set up. Uh, how, how many how many people can it seat? Several hundred, I guess. Huh? Well, it, it, we've had we've had audiences of several hundred. Actually, probably with students in our archives of live season, we probably had even more in there. We use that space for a couple of different outreach activities. In the spring, we have fourth and fifth grade students come in for what we call archives alive. Right now, it's Civil War archives alive, and they come in and living historians tell the story of the Civil War. Uh, right now, Mark Rehagen plays uh, Abraham Lincoln, and it's a, just a great way to reinforce what they're learning in their, in their school curriculum for Missouri history. Um, we also use that space on Thursday evenings, and we'd hope that the audience would come out for our Thursday evening programs. Uh, but we use that to have academic and public historians come out and do presentations on a wide variety of topics um, that we try and vary between Missouri music and, and maybe Civil War and other topics. In October, it seems like a, 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 a favorite time for ghost stories. And we even have put a lot of those online, too. So if you miss some of the programs, you can go to our website and view them online as well, past programs. So are they once a month? Are they, they, are they're, they one, they're once a month. Once a month, on, uh, on a Thursday, some Thursday of the month. It's, it's Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Sometimes it varies slightly. Um, rarely is it the first Thursday, and rarely is it the last Thursday, although I think our next one may be. Uh, but uh, but uh, we can post those up for the viewers so they can see that. It's a wonderful space. Um, I, I know, I recall, and it's kind of multi-purpose. You mentioned a couple of purposes, but I remember when when we were working on, a, on getting some consensus, for example, on Mis the Missouri State Penitentiary Project and what to do and who's going to do what, uh, the Office of Administration rolled out a lot of its ideas with a public uh, gathering in that venue. And it's uh, really very nice, it's handy, it's in the center of town, parking's good, um, uh, easy access, so it's, uh, it's, it's something that we uh, a lot of us just don't know it's there. State, state agencies do use it a lot for a lot, of, a lot of various meetings, and I think part of that is the parking. We have convenient parking right across the little railroad spur there from our building. Uh, you mentioned volunteers a little bit. Uh, Jefferson City uh, is a very giving community monetarily and also, also with its time. Tell me, tell me a little bit more about if, if somebody was interested in plugging in to any of the things that we've been talking about here today, what are the types of things that you use volunteers for and how can they get in touch with you? Um, I, we have a, an email address that's the best way to uh, get in touch with us. Uh, and so it's archvol, A-R-C-H-V-O-L, at S-O-S dot M-O dot G-O-V. Hopefully we can put that up on the screen for the viewers as well. Um, but that's probably the best way to get involved with us. If they're working on site, really come in and we will try and pattern a volunteer opportunity to work with them. It might be that they can read the old handwriting and they can index things for us. It might be that all they can do is pull staples, and that's fine too. We'll find something that we can use them for uh, with, with that. Great. So. Well, John, it's been great having you here today. You're, you've been with, with us here in Jefferson City for about five years, that's moved right. from Memphis. Memphis is a great historical town. It is. It is. Uh, glad, glad to be in my wife's home state. Yeah, very good. Well, glad to have you here, and uh, we'll have, a have you back again maybe when 
uh, there's some, something uh, really particularly interesting going on. Maybe we want, to, we want to highlight. We'll have you back. I'll be glad to come back. Thanks for spending a little time with us. And viewers at home, thanks for spending a little of your time with us uh, for another uh, edition of Capital City Matters. Have a great day.